Okay, guys, the, um, uh, lots of A's. Congratulations, good job. Uh, unfortunately, also some fairly low grades. Um, one perfect score. Hi, Mark. I will give you a uh, little token of appreciation for your support uh, attached to your exam when I return it. So if you didn't get it this time, hopefully uh, maybe you'll get it next time. Uh, the key is posted. <clears throat> Probably about the uh, pretty good job on the spectroscopy in general. Uh, of course, with a large number of A's, pretty good job on maybe lots of things. Uh, one probably the main question you gave people a lot of trouble was the uh, question, I think it was the top of the third page. Uh, the Grignard reagent, make Grignard and react with ethanol. Uh, Grignards are highly basic. Ethanol is a proton source. You're just going to propagate your Grignard and make benzene. Uh, none of the other products are, are mechanistically feasible. I mean, OH is not a good leaving group. That's one of those reactions where you really have to, first off, it was in the handout, okay, you can't use a product solvent with uh, the Grignard. <coughs> but the other point is, that's a, that's a question where you really have to think mechanistically, what's going on here, use your mechanistic knowledge to predict outcomes. Uh, such will be like on the final exam. Final exam is made up by someone in uh, a group in Michigan. Okay, you have no idea what's going to be on this thing. You've got to be able to, to think. And uh, the, the mechanistic knowledge is your first step to thinking. Um, all right. So uh, I'd really look at that one and think about why the answers, the other answers don't work. Other than that, I didn't see too many problems. Uh, one of them had two correct answers. Both GBR3 and thionyl chloride were correct. Uh, second one, Roman numeral six on page two. A and whatever was across, so that was B. So two on the top top row, both of them were correct. Uh, you need an S and two. You basically need two inversions on that question. Okay, let me know if you have any questions. You want to come by? We'll sit down and go over your exam, etc. Please do that. Okay, make sure you learn from your mistakes, especially if they're sort of general, like mechanisms. Um, WDAM stands for what does arrow mean? If you're not using arrows directly, I'll give you a WDAM. I mean, that means I don't know what you're showing here. I don't know what your arrow means. Um, okay, aromaticity. We, um, we can get started. The, um, let's sort of get back to where we were when we ended. We were doing an MO of uh, benzene. Um, You've seen the, uh, the key to drawing the MO diagrams for aromatic systems, for the conjugated systems. Uh, 6P orbitals are going to give how many MOs? Six. 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 Okay. Uh, we'll state some of these things as we move forward. Let me just restate some. You're always going to have one that's low. Alright? There's only one way to have good overlap all the way around. Plus, plus, plus. Okay. Only one low. From there, you're going to have two. How many total we need? Six. 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 Two more. Now if you got, we need one more. So it'll be up here by itself. That's actually the worst way. Now they're not always going to be up here. You go one, two, 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 until you run out. You may have one at the top, you may not. If it's an odd number, it'll like if it's five, you'll just have one, two, two. Okay? Uh, midline is typically going to come right through symmetrically. Those above the midline are going to be anti-bonding. Those below the midline are going to be bonding. And we drew these six last time by looking for nodes. How many nodes does this one have? Zero. Zero nodes. How many does this, these two degenerate MOs have? One. Uh, one node. How many here? Two. Okay, nodes can help you actually draw the MO in terms of how they were interacting. 
the individual orbitals. Uh, how many electrons we're dealing with in this pi system? Six. Six. Put them in. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. What do you see? First off, all electrons paired. That's going to be very important. Okay. All electrons paired. The other thing is, what type of orbitals are the electrons in? Bonding. Bonding. Now that's actually secondary. Most important is all electrons paired in your MO diagram or your MO theory description here. Okay? Is that pretty much what we did last time? I tried to sum it up there. That's what we created last time. Uh, one thing we can see is probably in the white. Okay. You can actually look at the, the molecular orbitals of benzene. Give me R in this handout. Okay. Here's the, remember the best one was where they, it overlapped all the way around, constructive overlap all the way around. It looks like this. This is a top view. Okay. And so there's, a, there's electron uh, density all the way around. When you go up, one nodes. So you hear the nodes. And the electron density is over here or here, but not right through the center there. That's a plane where there's no electron density. What you got to get across here is that's one orbital now. Okay? It's kind of odd, strange. It's really a higher mathematics. Two electrons are in here and they're spread all over here. Here, we got two electrons in this MO. Well, where are they at? Well, that gets down to what is an orbital, okay? It's a mathematical description of where the electrons are. They're like over here and here. Is, is one over here and one over there? Well, you have to think about what an orbital means. Okay? Well, look at that look at that orbital up there, you know. Uh, basically none of the at, none of the atoms have a bonding interaction at the very top. Fortunately, no electrons are in that molecular orbital in the ground state. Uh, but those are the ones we drew where you can see it at the top view where you can actually see the nodes. Um, okay, now we're ready to do the same thing for cyclobutadiene. And I'll, I'll do this, we'll do this systematically. Um, first thing that's important is, is it a cyclic conjugated system? Fully, fully cyclic conjugated. Because if it's not, then the MO diagrams that we're doing are not applicable. You can't do it. This assumes that there is a cyclic conjugated system. So yes. Okay. How do we know it's cyclic conjugated? Does every atom have a P orbital? Okay. By the way, that doesn't necessarily make it cyclic conjugated. What? Why could it not be cyclic conjugated if? No, it's fully cyclic conjugated. I mean, that's fully conjugated, but is it fully cyclic conjugated? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's not it. So that's not everybody. Somebody say something. Did you have a triple bond? Well, if you have a chain, it's a triple bond. Now let me go and give you the answer, guys. Uh, it has four p orbitals. Does that mean it's cyclic conjugated? No. Not necessarily. Those four, those four have to be overlapping. What if it had four and they were like this? Game over. I mean, just because they're adjacent doesn't mean they're actually. We'll get into that a little bit later. Okay. Uh, let's assume it is. It, it looks like it is. Uh, every atom has a p orbital. Okay. How many p orbitals? Let's take stock. How many uh, p orbitals we got here? Four. Uh, four p orbitals. How many electrons in this pi system? Four. Four. So four <coughs> pi electrons. Okay. This was six and six over here. So four p orbitals. How many mo's are we going to get out of this? Four. Okay. Let's try.
try to draw them, and I'll, I'm going to do sort of down low so we can put two, okay? Um, if um, this is going to be the lowest, I reckon we'll put it right here. How many nodes is the lowest at? None. 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 So what, it's really the best way to over, to get a rack all the way around. If that's plus, what is this? Plus. 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 Yeah. Okay. That's this. Uh, zero nodes. Uh, net would be four bonding net. Each one of these is a bonding. That's down here. Okay, let's look at the next one. Uh, how many nodes at the next level? One. One. So we can draw a node here, which is usually symmetrically through the molecule. If that's plus, what is this? Minus. Minus. If that's minus, what is this? Minus. Minus. See, there's overlap here because there's no node between here. What's this? Plus. Plus. So no overlap here, no overlap here, leaving an area right there. But, but this is overlap. So what do we have? Bonding, bonding, what is this? Adjacent. They're adjacent, but they're destructive overlap, so that's called anti-bonding. And what's this? Ah, what's the net? Zero. Ah, zero net. What do you want to call this type of MO? Is it bonding? Is it anti-bonding? It's neither. What do you want to call it? Non-bonding. Non it's actually called non-bonding. And non-bonding are going to sit where? On, On the midline. So this is uh, one node. This is going to be called non-bonding. Okay, I'm going to erase this so I can get a little uh, closer here. We can do another one. We can have, uh, we could do it like this, but I think you actually, it comes to here. If this is plus, that's going to be minus. Mm -hmm. Just so it's symmetrical. What is the net here? Zero. Zero. Uh, there's there's neither or nothing. It's it's also uh, non-bonding. But it's another way, and you actually do get you get two of those degenerate. Uh, then we can we need to draw a fourth, right? Mm -hmm. uh, let's put it up here. How many nodes? Two. two. Boom, boom. If that's plus, what is this? Minus. Minus. What's this? Plus. And Minus. what's the net here? Four. 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 A, B. A, B, net. Because every interaction is anti-bonding, there's four. So that's a higher energy, right? We're going to put that one up here. There's your four. This is relative energy. Where's the midline? The midline cuts symmetrical through. What is symmetrical through? The zero. Actually, right here. Those non-binding are on the midline. Yes. Um, they're they're not better than isolated, but they're also not worse than isolated. So there we go. How many electrons we got to put into these? Four. Four. One. Where's the next one? Down. There. You know, it's all Hunt's rule, off ball. It's the same stuff you use. Where's the next one? Where's the fourth one go? Brittany? Uh huh. What rule is that? Hunt's rule states that you don't pair up until you feel degenerate. Off-ball means you start at the lowest, right? I think that's Hunt's rule, right? 
Basically, you don't start pairing up until you feel all degenerates. There you go. What do we see here? Where are, what type of MOs are our electrons in? Unpaired. Biggest thing here is unpaired. Unpaired. This guy has two electrons unpaired. That's it's a di radical. Two unpaired electrons. Not only are they unpaired, what type of orbitals are the uh, two unpaired electrons in? Non-bonding. That's actually secondary because sometimes we'll see a di-radical. The electrons may be in bonding, but the, the unpaired is the main point. This is a di-radical. You can't tell that from just looking at the old resonance uh, atomic orbital view. It looks like the six. I mean, you can draw resonance structures of this. They, look, they both look like cyclic conjugated systems. And so it's sort of a failure of our basic model. But the MO model really tells you the difference in the two. And why this is a very stable camper here, this is so unstable, remember? It's only stable at like minus 78 degrees. If you let it warm up any, it'll just dimerize. Okay? Now you may be thinking, well, why not just pair them up? Well, some things you just can't do. Uh, remember, this is based on math and electrons. It's like, you, it's like, well, why not just put two electrons in the same little uh, nutshell? Well, electrons repel. So there's reasons why that this is just the way it is. Okay. So let's go ahead and introduce Huckel's rule, and then we'll start applying these to other systems. Huckel sort of recognized uh, a trend here. We'll draw more MOs, but what we're going to see is if it has a certain number of electrons, like six, uh, six pi electrons is aromatic. But four pi electrons is what? This is called anti-aromatic. It's a, because of the cyclic conjugated nature, it's actually very unstable. So cyclic conjugation is not always good. Right? That's a new thing. It's actually bad in this case. It, it leads to it being a diuretic. Uh, four pi electrons is anti. Okay? Well, what about eight pi electrons? How do you know it's anti, T? Okay, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so what does Uncle's rule say? Uncle recognized that a certain number of electrons will always be aromatic, a certain number will always be anti-aromatic. What he recognized is, is a certain, certain number you'll always get them paired, and a certain number you'll always get them as a diuretical. Well, here's the number. It's 4n, 4n plus 2 will be aromatic, where n is an integer. What if n is 1? What is 4n plus 2 equal? 6. Six. See, this is a 4n plus 2 number. What if n is 0? Well, that doesn't work. Uh, no. Well, it could. It actually could. I was thinking, but it's still aromatic. 4n plus 2 is aromatic. What if n is 0? 2. You will actually see systems that are aromatic that have just 2 electrons. That's 4n plus 2, number where n is 0. Um, on the other hand, he recognized that if he has just four n electrons, those will always be anti-aromatic. That is, whenever you do the MO, you'll always see those being diuretical. For example, uh, what if n is one? Four. Okay. What if n is two? So, what do you predict for eight? Anti-aromatic. Anti okay. We'll see, though. Would you predict this to be aromatic? It's definitely not aromatic, because that's not a 4n plus 2 number. Uh, what about if I showed you a big, a big pi cyclic system that had um, uh, 18 pi electrons in it? Aromatic, anti-aromatic? Aromatic. Aromatic. That's a 4n plus 2 number, where n is what? 4. Where n is 4. OK? So what do we got? Anti-aromatic is 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. It's multiples of 4. 
Aromatic is also multiples of 4, but it's plus 2. So you start with 2. It's 2, 6, 10, 14, 18, 22. So this is where n is the number of... And it's just a number. An integer. Name a number. 3. Okay. 4n plus 2. To be aromatic, it would be 14. 14. Right? 14 is an aromatic number. Okay. Um, but it's got to be cyclic conjugated. So let's look at it. Here's the eight membered rings. Yeah, but I never, I never really do the math like that. I just know uh, four, eight, twelve. <coughs> Those are all. Four end numbers. Whatever works for you. Yeah. You can solve it mathematically, but I'm not sophisticated enough to do that. Okay. Let's look at this structure. Cyclic conjugated? Yeah. Does it have a p orbital at every atom? Yeah. Now, here's the kicker, though. <coughs> Are those p orbitals really uh, parallel and interacting all the way around? No, no, we'll have no. to see that. It looks like it's cyclic like conjugated. Okay? If it is cyclic like conjugated, would it be aromatic or anti aromatic? It would be anti aromatic. Because that's a 4 n number, where n is 2. But if planar, what does it mean to be if planar? Well, well, let's go back to benzene. Here's benzene, and it is indeed planar. Why is it planar? Because it's flat. Why is it flat? Because every carbon is what? SP2? So every carbon is trigonal planar. Well, if each carbon is planar, and then they bond together, guess what the whole thing ends up being? Planar. Okay. Why is it planar? Well, look at the carbon right there. What does it have in, in addition to the trigonal planar, which, who, okay, see the trigonal planar? It's P orbital. Now, every one has it. But they're straight up or perpendicular to the plane. But because every carbon is like this, I can't stick my finger right through there, but every carbon has a P orbital straight up and then it has the trigonal planar. But if every carbon is planar, and then you start bonding carbons together, and it's planar, your whole system ends up planar. Now what if uh, these two p orbitals were not straight up, but like this? They're still adjacent, but they're no longer interacting. And look what happened when that, is the ring still planar? No. You see how it's no longer planar, it had to buckle? Okay. So it's very important is, are these p orbitals really interacting? Now it's anti-aromatic if planar. That's what Hochul's rule predicts. First off, let's do a quick MO diagram just to see that Hochul, Hochul knew what he was talking about. How many uh, MOs do we want to make? Eight. Eight. Okay, I'm going to do this sort of quickly. I'm not going to go through and do all the, uh, what the MOs look like. We're going to set it up like this. One at the bottom, right? There's always one that's best. You can't get two that's best. Then you go with two until you run out. That's three, five, seven, and then one more is going to be at the top. Uh, now, where's the midline? The midline goes symmetrically through, so where do you want to draw it? It's actually going to come right through here, you know? Now, this is always, it's symmetrical in terms of energy. Right now, it's symmetrical in terms of distribution, but that's just coincidence. So, what do we have? You would label these as what type of MO? 
How about this one? How about these? Yeah. And number of nodes. Well, let's first put in the electrons. How many electrons are we dealing with? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What are we left with? <coughs> Diradical. But see, that's what Hochul figured out. He figured out that every every multiple of four n is going to lead you to that radical. And so that's why we have the four n four n is anti ionic. But every multiple of four n plus two is going to be all paired, and we call that aromatic. Uh, how many nodes does the homo level have? Which level is the homo? Uh, the one below the two. This one, right? Highest occupied molecular orbitals. Uh, How many nodes does that have? Two nodes. Zero, one, two, three, four. And the nodes can help you draw the MOs if you're asked to do that. Okay. So what? How do we expect this compound to behave? Very stable or very unstable? unstable. You would expect unstable based on this MO theory. Well, here's some experimental evidence or observations. The compound is actually fairly stable. I can, I can bring it in here and warm it up. It'll, it'll remain the same molecule. Does that sound like it's anti aromatic No. No, that's not anti aromatic behavior. <coughs> Aromatics are very unstable diuretical compounds. Um, uh, we know it reacts with bromine to give an addition product. Heats of hydrogenation is similar to that of four isolated alkenes. Thus it has no apparent aromatic stability. We're talking about anti-aromatic, why would it have? So that's kind of that doesn't support the fact that it's anti-aromatic. But it's certainly not aromatic either. But we're not even saying it is. Here, here's a big important thing though. It has alternating short long carbon-carbon bonds. And that can be uh, determined by like X-ray crystallography. So the fact that it has alternating short long, does that sound like it's cyclic conjugated? No. It's actually not even cyclic conjugated. It's actually just four isolated alkenes, which is what the heat of hydrogenation sort of tells us. Um, why is that? Well, let me ask you this. Do you think this compound wants to be planar? No. Because if it, the, the reason it's not cyclic conjugated is because it's not planar. Why does it not want to be planar? It'll, it'll contort until it reaches the optimum bond angle. Yeah, but what makes optimum? Why does it not want to be cyclic conjugated? Because if it is, that means it's a diuretical. Does it want to be a diuretical? No. Would it like to adopt some other confirmation to avoid being diuretical? Yes. Yes. What's going on with this molecule is it's not planar. This is the eight, okay? If we make it planar, it's anti-aromatic. And the compound knows it. And it's higher energy. Diuretic. So don't things like to change conformations to achieve lower energy? I mean, that's like when we did Newman conformations, right? Or whatever. Lowest energy conformations. This guy says, huh, I'm going to show you. I'm going to instead exist like that. And now it's no longer cyclic conjugated. And now it's no longer a diuretical. Now it's just four isolated alkenes. And the molecule is much happier this way. Okay? This is called tub shape. And now if we look at. Uh, I'm going to bring the pencils to act as P orbitals. I 
mean, those those two are overlapping to make that pi bond. Right. But that one's like that. Oh, I'll hold it there. And this one is like really I need pencil here. I need other fingers. Put your two fingers on this pipe on to make a pipe on. Here? Yeah. Straight up. Okay? Hold it there. Hold your hammer comes up some, some people. Okay. Okay. They're like that. Are you making pipe on? Hold it like that. Okay. There you go. There's the pipe on there. Now here's the pipe on here. Okay? Can you see? Wriggle your left finger. Are these two, can y'all see? Are those two overlapping? No. Can everybody see? Basically, hold your fingers up without it. Straight up. These are, this is next door, but it's like this. Now, if we flattened it out, it would all be like this, and it would become psychic conjugated. But guess what? Then it'd be diuretical. This molecule becomes non-planar to avoid being anti-aromatic. That's the way it exists. This is just, a, this is just four double bonds in a ring. No psychic conjugated. It avoids it. A lot of compounds avoid being uh, anti-aromatic by becoming non-planar. And once they become non-planar, this MO description is not valid anymore. Because they're no longer interacting and we can't combine them in eight different ways. Does that make sense? Cyclo, what do you want to call this guy? These are called cyclo, how many carbons are there? <coughs> cyclo, octa, and then how many enes? Four. Cyclo octa tetraene. That's why the four membered ring was called what? Cyclobuta, how many enes was in it? Yeah. Cyclobuta tui, diene. Okay. So cyclo octa tetraene is just a, it's just a polyene. It's, it's not aromatic or anti aromatic. It's non aromatic. Okay, let's look at some other. Everybody get uh, any questions about cyclooctane triene COT? Question. So how can you predict whether something is going to be anti-aromatic or non-aromatic? Uh, observations. Okay, so you can't predict that based off of the... Uh, it's hard to tell. We'll, we'll see more examples. But that's why it's important to know what type of physical observations do you want to try to make. Okay? For example, NMR. Where do you expect the signals for this to occur? Five to six. Five to six. It's not psychic conjugated. This is just an alkene, a polyene. So you can, it's hard for us to see molecules, right? But what you could do is you could go run into Mar that compound. And the NMR would tell you. Um, you say, hey, why does the NMR look like an alkene? Because that's what it is, just four alkenes. Um, what's the other examples of And ask that question again if we don't answer it. All right, here we go. These are called polyenes, although that implies that it may not be aromatic. Uh, how many is this? Ten. I see two, four, six, I see ten pi bonds. How many pi electrons? Ten. 10 pi electrons, how many p orbitals in the system? Uh, 10. 10 p orbitals. Is it cyclic conjugated? Yes. I would say potentially. Every atom has a p orbital next door. What, what is hard to tell, as we just asked, is are all these pi electrons? P orbitals actually overlap. That can be very difficult to tell. That's why in a lot of my problems, like in the workbook, there's like 20 structures to assess. I usually say assuming planar. Okay? If we assume this is planar, is it aromatic or anti aromatic? Aromatic. Why is that? Because, because 10 is a 4 and plus 2 number, where n is 2. Yeah. Uh, so this is aromatic if planar. So we have to kind of stipulate that. Do you see any reason it would want to avoid being planar? No. 
Does it want to avoid being aromatic? No, it loves being aromatic. This is good stability. Any other reason it might want to avoid? What type of bond angle strain do we have here, potentially? If the ring gets too big, the bonds have to stretch out, and that can be bad. Yeah. Well, here's the answer. That compound is actually known to be aromatic. It reacts by substitution. If you do a heat of hydrogenation, you'll see a lot of aromatic stability, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? That's an aromatic compound. Uh, what about this guy over here? What's the difference? That's, what is this, cyclo... I can't even wonder if can. Cyclodeca pentaene? Is that right? Is this cyclo... Deca pentaene? What is this? That's also cyclodecapentaene, but there you have two of the double bonds that are trans. Right here is all cis. Okay, here you have four cis, or three cis, but you have two trans. In organic one, I think we said if the double bonds in a ring, it's usually it's always going to be cis. Well, here's an exception to that. If the ring is big enough, you can have trans double bonds in the ring. Is that one actually more stable than the first one, the one left? Because it has the, uh, the overlapping P orbitals in the center there. Oh! You're saying these two are overlapping? Yes. Oh, that's interesting. I'm actually going to... Um, say no eventually to your question, but how could those be interacting? They're not even bonded together. Because they're really close. They're yeah, what, what you're on to is something that is seen in advanced organic. Uh, that would be overlap of P orbitals. They're not even bonded together, sigma bonded together, but they can overlap if they're spatially close enough. I would, I would never mention that here, but you're on, yeah. That's an advanced organic topic. But here's the kicker. What is on this carbon that's not shown? An H. And what's on this one? H. And look at that right there. Even though H's are quite small, those H's repel each other. Okay? Because of that, this ring, uh, I don't have it here. Actually, I could have. Because of that, it, it's, there's H's there, it sort of puckle, uh, puckers. Okay, I don't have a model. Um, this steric interaction here causes the, the ring system, the entire ring system, to be non-planar. So what we have here is aromatic, if planar, because again it's 10, But actually, it's what? Non <clears throat> it's actually non-aromatic. Because it's not plain. It's not a psychoconjugated system. Now, how would you know that? Well, guess what? If you run NMR of that compound, you'll see signals in the 5 to 6 range instead of the 7 to 8 range. And guess what? If you do heat supply hydrogenation, you'll see that it doesn't have any aromatic stability hardly. Okay. Now it's still stable. Would you ever predict this to be anti-aromatic? No. You would never predict anti-aromatic because it's not a four n plus. It's not a four n number. But it's also not aromatic. Now naphthalene over here, which is the same as this, except the two H's are removed. You remove the two H's and instead bond the carbons together, now this is aromatic. Because now those H's aren't there and the system can flatten back out. Can you get from the, uh, the second one to naphthalene uh, through an oxidation reaction? Good terminology. That would be an oxidation because you're removing two H's. I don't know if that's ever been done, uh, but theoretically. Um, 
This does show you that you can have a sigma bond sort of across the pi system. What you're still looking at here is the periphery. And that's still, the periphery is still 10 pi electrons. Okay, there's a sheet in the workbook with about 20 structures asking you to, to label them as aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic. And I believe it says assume they're all planar because that can be hard to determine. I gave you a few examples where it's not planar. But again, that can be tough to tell. Okay, any questions about aromaticity at this point? I'm trying to move us along because a lot of this stuff, is, there's a lot to talk about, but I want to say it fast. Uh, but hopefully what we need to do, we, we, we did that clear enough. Any questions? Yeah, diagrams only are applicable to right? Has to be psychic conjugated before you can start saying the orbitals are interacting to make them open. It's not, it's not applicable. Okay, now let's look at uh, some ions. Can ions be aromatic? Yeah. Yes, they can. Because Huckel's rule says nothing about it having to not be an ion. If it has if it has four n plus two electrons and it's a psychic conjugated system, well then it's aromatic. First off, how about this compound? Aromatic, anti, or non? Non. Why is it non? Because it's not conjugated. It's not psychic conjugated system because that carbon is sp3. It does not have a p orbital. Game over. That's a cyclodiene. Uh, good for Diels Alder, but it's not aromatic. That is, it doesn't behave as an aromatic compound would behave. Uh, what if we make an uh, anion here? First off, how would we make the anion? We would treat this with theoretically what? There's two H's here. How many here now? One. So we've got to remove an H, so you want to react this with what? A base. A base. Got to with a base to remove an H. Like this. Somebody said in to lithium, that's good. Um, I'm just going to say base because I'm not going to talk about what uh, the strength of the base yet. There is one H there. Okay, what's the hybridization of the carbon with the lone pair? SSU2. We'll make sure that these somebody. SP2. SP2, good. Why is it SP2? Because any time a lone pair is next to a P orbital, the lone pair is going to want to be in a P orbital? Yes. Yeah. It's actually going to be SP2. Unless maybe that makes it bad for some reason. Let's see where this takes us. If it's sp2, that means, I'm going to draw this sideways. Um, and here, here's this here. I wouldn't draw that h there just to, here. So that means it's sp2 with a p orbital, right? And what's in the p orbital? Two electrons. Two electrons. Now, each of these is a pi bond, so there's a p orbital and a p orbital. How many electrons in each of these? One, one, overlap makes pi bond from this localized view. And then we have pi bond here, one, one, pi bond. Okay, is it a cyclic conjugated system? Does every atom have a p orbital? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Cyclic conjugated. Check. Now I'm assuming that these are all planar here, they're all sticking straight up, all five, and they're all <coughs> interacting. Okay? How many pi electrons? One, two, three, four, and then two makes okay. six pi electrons. So what does this equal? 
Psychic conjugated system with six pi electrons. Aromatic. Aromatic. This is an aromatic anion. Aromatic carbanion. Now, do you think it wants to be planar? Sure. Things want to be aromatic. There's no reason it can't be. It, it is aromatic. Now, usually hydrocarbons, this is hydrocarbons, that's all it is, hydrogen and carbon. Usually they're not that basic. This guy is actually quite basic. Uh, pKa, I think, about 15. Does it say that somewhere on the sheet? It's actually down below. Down below it says 16. That's the compound down below. This is very basic, I mean, very acidic for a hydrocarbon. Usually hydrocarbons have pKa's like about 40. Why is it so acidic? Why is it so willing to become the anion? Oh, it's aromatic. Now, what's so special about aromatic? We sort of said what aromatic is. I don't think we've really said why it's so special. Something just magical about the fully cyclic conjugated system. It has a certain number of electrons, 4 plus 2. That's like the mother of delocalization, and that's just like so stable. We call it aromatic. Aromatic anion. What about this anion over here? Would you, is this aromatic? No. no. Uh, if we put this in an sp2, if this is sp2 and put the long pair in a p, we can have a, a, a p orbital here. How many p orbitals would we have? Eight. Two, four, six, seven. We would have eight pi eight. electrons, but we would only have seven p orbitals. Right? That's two p orbitals, two p orbitals, two p orbitals. If we had a p orbital there, that makes seven. But in terms of electrons, it would be eight. Two, four, six, and that, that p orbital would have two for eight. This does have one extra electron. That's why it's an anion. So, are these seven uh, overlapping? Yes. Looks like they could be. If they are, what is this? <coughs> Anti aromatic. Again, if planar. Here's the first thing. Would you expect this anion on the right to be aromatic? No, it doesn't contain the right number of pi electrons. That now is anti-aromatic. If it's planar. If planar. Do you think it wants to be planar? No. 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 Guess what? It's really it's not anti-aromatic. Because that carbanion doesn't. Well, why would it want to become sp2? That carbanion stays sp3, and the lone pair doesn't move to a pure. Why did we always say if a lone pair is next to a pure, the lone pair want to be in a pure? Because that leads to more stability. Does it lead to more stability in this case? No. no, here it leads to bad. So here it doesn't do it. Here's the kicker guy. There's actually very few anti-aromatic compounds. Because most of them, the system will avoid to do something and it will avoid it. Cyclobutadiene is anti-aromatic because it's so small it can't pucker and, and it can't become non-planar. Since that's SP3, it's non-planar. But in the end, we can answer questions like at the very bottom. Why is this so much more acidic than that? Because this anion would be aromatic, but this anion would be what? Would be anti. Would be non. But non is like, there's nothing there either. I mean, that's just like... This anion would be non. 
That I-9 is also very hard to make. But that one is easy. That's more to our city. Um, let's look at cations. You also have aromatic cations. Let me just sort of set the stage here. And then please look ahead, guys, so we can finish up this. On the next page, we'll be looking at compounds with heteroatoms, like nitrogen and oxygen. Okay, please look at those. But here, what is this here? Aromatic, anti? It's not. Okay. So how about these? One of these is aromatic and one of these is not. Figure out which is which. Please look ahead. Let me also say this, guys, before we leave. Uh, we'll finish up aromaticity uh, on Monday here. We'll be moving into then reactions of aromatics. Uh, I still haven't said anything about when the sulfamylide, the sulfamylamide report is due. Again, I've never done it this early, and I'm not sure if it's good to do it that early or not. We've got a little break. Um, the uh, Dial report uh, hopefully be done by those and return those in here on Monday. Um, we also need to discuss carbon NMR for the sulfur metal hybrid for a little bit. We'll probably do that here on Monday. Um, I think that's it, guys. See half of you this afternoon. Have a good weekend. Enjoy your Valentine's Day.